Hello and welcome to another Fantasy Premier League video. My name is Steve and today we're talking about transfer plans for game week 3. So I'll read out my team quickly to start this off uh, for those of you that have only got the audio and don't see the visuals. Uh, we've got Raya in net, we've got Trent, Cancelo, Zinchenko, James and Castagna at the moment across the defensive line. In the midfield, we've got Martinelli, Salah with the captain's armband, De Bruyne and Luis Diaz, and then the solo man up front in Jesus, who's currently sitting with the vice captain C at the moment. And on the bench, we've got Danny Ward, Neto in first spot, Archer in second, and Plunge is my only definitely not playing 4.5 striker on the bench. Now, at the moment, I've got Castagna sitting in my starting lineup. Uh, this is because this was my initial plan game week one when I realized that I needed some sort of rotation pairing with Neto. Um, Leicester had a, has a great game against Southampton. However, having watched the first two matches of Leicester, um, Danny Ward in net new number one is putting them under some unnecessary pressure, um, potentially still coming up to the speed of actually being in match and getting used to um, barking orders out at his defence and receiving feedback from them. I've also got the likes of Fafana at Leicester, who's being linked with potential moves elsewhere. Um, and so the defensive unit at Leicester is not solid. And so I, this is something that we couldn't see game week one. And so Castagna is on line for the chopping block this game week. Him or Neto would be my will be my two most likely transfers this week. Uh, Neto hasn't returned anything so far this season. However, he has had his opportunities. Um, in game week one, I think he assisted the assister um, for that for their goal, one of their goals or their only goal. I can't quite remember what the scoreline was there. And then last week, he actually had the ball had gone past the keeper and had an open net to shoot at, took a heavy touch, and unfortunately did not convert the goal and so if you know if Neto had maybe got an assist in game week one or actually scored that goal in game week two I suspect less content creators out there would be talking about him so far what I've seen from him is his positional position on the uh, on the pitch is quite far forward um, he is quite involved in the attack and I suspect he is still underpriced at 5.5 million and probably still the best option however we will go through the other options on him uh, but those are the two most likely candidates this week and so we'll start with Neto because he's currently on the bench I could potentially play Castagna but we'll go through Neto first so the viable replacements in and around the same price point we've got Gordon at Everton at 5.5 uh, playing up front but Everton don't look great uh, they don't really have much attack. Um, if you check out my points and video from a couple of days ago, I go into a little bit of detail on Everton and specifically around Gordon. He does not look like he's comfortable in that role. He does not look like he knows where to be when the ball is being progressed in attack. Uh, he's not making the right runs. He's not providing the right outlets. And this is simply because he just doesn't know that position too well. Um, and, and Everton as a whole unit just are a hard avoid for me in fact they're even a team to target and so I would not be recommending anyone jumping across to Gordon Aronson at Leeds looks like quite a nifty player um, he looks very rapid um, involved in a lot of the workup play however they do play Chelsea this week and so that is not a very good transfer and to be honest I think Neto is probably still ahead of Aronson in the pecking order in terms of potential points earned. Um, we've also got Pascal Gross at Brighton who's been getting into some very good positions. Looks like he is no longer being used as a utility player and maybe uh, settling down into um, a spot that he's trying to make his own. He also might potentially be on penalties uh, something we're not too sure about yet however he's already gone up to 5.6 million and that prices me out of um, a netto transfer to gross for this week unless I want to use both of my free transfers so I have two free transfers um, walking into game week three 
Um, another possibility is to go to um, a slight downgrade and go to someone at Brentford. Um, I had a quick look at Jensen, but his minutes do not look very assured. And the other option <laughs> is De Silva, but he's just a no-go for me. I've watched him play, and I don't see I don't see him scoring a lot of a lot of points um, throughout the season. And so, for right now, I think in that price point and even below, I think Neto is still the best option and so he's been put on the bench with Castagna starting in the lineup as my most likely replacement this week however as I've said I do not trust the Leicester defense and so I really do want to get rid of him my options are to stick in the 4.5 million bracket or potentially go down to Nico Williams at Nottingham Forest however Nottingham Forest are not going to keep any clean sheets well not many um, they were very lucky to get away with a clean sheet in their game last week. Uh, Neto, Nico Williams does look very attacking, though. So for four million to so half a million cheaper, he doesn't quite need the assured, sure, well, the assurity of clean sheets and attacking options. Um, four point oh million just playing is is, is there is good enough, but. In the structure that I'm lining up with, I've got two dead bench spots, and so my only playing bench member needs to be strong and needs to be able to come in and do the business. So I'm looking for multiple routes to points here, and so a drop down from 4.5 million to the 4.0 million bracket doesn't really make sense for me in my formation. So I'm looking at other 4.5 million options, and the lowest, the most likely two teams that I've landed on is Brentford and Brighton. Um, I'll just bring up the fixture ticker. This is my own fixture ticker. Uh, it's just one I've built um, on my machine here uh, simply because I like to play around with the weightings of um, opposition opponents. And as you can see here, I have, downgrade, I have downgraded Manchester United to no longer a lethal or hard opponent. They're actually sitting in as a medium opponent at the moment. Even flirted with the idea of downgrading them even further. But I think medium's okay for now. Which does reorganise um, the fixture ticker for the, um, the easiest games for the next six game weeks. We have Arsenal at the top. Man City second. Then Brighton third. Liverpool fourth. Brentford fifth. Uh, Chelsea 6th and then Nottingham Forest 7th and I wouldn't be looking any lower than that for a 4.5 million option and so the two best teams there with 4.5 million options is Brentford and Brighton um, I could have gone with Saliba at Arsenal but I am already tripled up in Arsenal and so I will not be making a downgrade of Zinchenko to Saliba however if any of you are out there for looking for a 4.5 million option, you do have a spot left. I would highly consider Saliba. He looks like a really good, um, really good player. But if you can squeeze the funds to go up to a Zinchenko, he has way more routes to points and well worth the extra 0.5 or 0.6 million because I think Zinchenko has gone up in price already. So really looking at, we're really looking at either someone from Brentford or Brighton. Now I've already got Raya in net and so if I do choose to go Brentford I will be doubling up on the Brentford defence um, or I could go alternative to Brighton and try to cover the um, Sanchez owners in net as, as a rotating option with Neto. However I am looking to rotate with Neto as I've said which is Wolves and so I'm really looking for options Game week three, where Wolves play Tottenham. Game week seven, where Wolves play Liverpool. And game week eight, where Wolves play Man City. And so for three, seven, and eight, Brighton play West Ham, Bournemouth, and Crystal Palace, which isn't too bad. That West Ham fixture away, though, is not ideal. And Crystal Palace at home, Crystal Palace are a bit of a bit of an annoying team to deal with. Whereas if we look at Brentford, Brentford are playing Fulham away in game week three and then Southampton away in game week seven. 
and then Arsenal at home in game week 8. Now, if I wasn't looking at six future game weeks, the clear and obvious pick here is probably to go with Brentford. Um, and to be honest, in game week eight, I don't think I should worry too much about a rotation option with Neto because by that point, I'm either probably wildcarding or would have made transfers in order to s sort out Neto or um, the 4.5 million defender option that I choose to bring in. And so at the moment, it's looking likely that I'm going to go with someone like Henry from Brentford, potentially, as uh, my best choice replacement there. Uh, I also have alternative transfer options. Um, game week two I was flirting with the idea of downgrading De Bruyne to an 8 million option. Um, someone like Kuliseski but he was playing Chelsea but kuliseski has got a much better game this week against Wolves. And then upgrading Jesus to Haaland. However I'm very glad I did not make that move, clearly, because Jesus has got an absolute monster haul. And to be honest, I think De Bruyne and Jesus is just a better combination. Um, so downgrading De Bruyne doesn't make sense to me, um, and getting rid of Jesus definitely doesn't make sense to me. And so if I was going to switch out De Bruyne it'd more likely be down to a 4.5 million option and upgrading one of my bench members and say Plange up to a Haaland and play um, a fourth 5-3-2 or, or actually completely change my formation but the way that I'm set up is a rotating 4-5-1 and 5-4-1 um, at the start of the season because um, that's just where I see the most points value and points potential so De Bruyne is staying in my squad, so is Jesus for this week and for the foreseeable future. Jesus has got a great run of fixtures coming up, so does Man City. Um, I could potentially look to take out Luis Diaz as well and just play around with that 8 million spot. However, they are play he is playing Manchester United, who look very shaky in defence. Um, Nunes is also injured, uh, injured, suspended for Liverpool for um, three weeks. And so if Liverpool are going to score goals, it's most likely going to come from Salah and Diaz. I'm suspecting Firmino to play up front. That is assuming he is fit. Um, Klopp typically um, plays Firmino in the fixtures against the top six anyway. If you have a look at um, previous lineups, you'll quite often notice that he goes Firmino up top against the likes of um, City, Chelsea, um, Spurs, Arsenal... United. Uh, it would have been interesting to see what he would have done this week had Nunes not got um, suspended, but that is what it is, and so Luis Diaz actually becomes a more viable option this week. And so those of you out there that are holding Robertson, um, with the loss of Matip in defence and Thiago in the midfield, uh, Liverpool's clean sheet potential does drop slightly. Um, I, I don't think it drops a hell of a lot, to be completely honest. Liverpool are a great defensive unit. They know they've got great players all around the pitch. So um, I think the first two game weeks may just be um, Liverpool getting used to potentially some of those new members, but I suspect their clean sheet potential to come come through are probably clear, but I don't see Manchester United scoring against Liverpool this week unless we pull an absolutely absolute worldie out of the hat or something. But if you are thinking a little bit more long term, I suspect that if you go Robertson down to the likes of James, so save a million there, or slightly less than a million, I'm assuming James has probably gone up by now, and upgrading to Diaz in midfield will earn you more points over the run. Um, or if you've already got James in your team, maybe someone like Cucurella or Chilwell once he get, starts getting a start or something like that. Um, but Luis Diaz, I would say, becomes an even more outstanding option with the likes of Nunes being injured, uh, injured suspended up front. Um, my other options is to get rid of Zinchenko and go to um, Walker from Man City. 
to bank in on the clean sheet potential of Man City. However, um, there was a couple of transfer rumours that Man City were looking at Tierney, um, which could see Tierney come in and replace Walker with um, Cancelo going out to take over Walker's spot. And so I don't really want to... I don't really want that headache in the next couple of game weeks. I don't want a surprise benching. But also, I don't know why I would want to get rid of Zinchenko either. He's scored 13 points in two games. Yes, he only got a point last week. But he's very attacking. He's very far forward. Arsenal's clean sheet potential over the next round of fixtures is very high as well. Um, They play Bournemouth away this week. Fulham at home the following week. Then Aston Villa at home the week after that. Manchester United away, which is still now an easy game. Everton at home, which is a team to target, and then Brentford away before going to Tottenham in game week nine, which is when most people will probably be pulling the wildcard button. And so tripling up in Arsenal looks like a very good strategy. And therefore, I do not want to waste the transfer on getting rid of Zinchenko. And I do think Zinchenko's got goals in him, goals and assists and clean sheets. I think he's a bit of a sleeper. Um, I suspect you'll find... Uh, a lot more people talking about him over the next couple of game weeks, and so he is staying in my team. And the rest of the team's looking solid. So as you can see, um, there's not a hell of a lot I need to do with this team. So I even had to think a little bit harder and go, <laughs> oh, is Castagna actually the best option? Maybe I should just leave him in the team. I mean, they could quite easily keep a clean sheet against Southampton. Um, Southampton have been scoring in their in their in their games uh, in the first couple of game weeks and Leicester are leaky and so <sighs> I'm leaning more the more I talk about it in this video I'm leaning more to selling Castagna for sure the other options that I have looked at is sideways transfers in my team I don't really see anyone on my team that I want to do a sideways transfer for um, I could also potentially play the market and look for um, building some team value but I would only be looking at potentially saving players that are going down in value and none of my players look to be going down in value at the moment apart from maybe Neto so if we bring up the FPL statistics website just have a quick search on Neto so this is the main site that I use to figure out when player prices are changing it seems to be the most accurate um, in terms of trying to guess when these things are going to change you can see on the very if you can see on screen it's quite small but the very last column over here is called target if this gets near negative 100 it is likely that that player will go down in value that night and obviously if they're close to positive 100 they are likely going up in value at the moment we've got Neto sitting on a negative 67.3 so he is unlikely to change the next couple of games so he may survive till the weekend uh, but even still, if he was going to go down to um, 5.4 million, he may still be the best option in that price bracket. And so I'm less worried about losing value on him. I suspect he will, after the Tottenham fixture, maybe even in the Tottenham fixture, start getting some returns. And um, the way the market works is if you do lose value in a player... If they go up in value again and you haven't sold that player, you immediately get that um, loss of value repaid to you. It's not the same as your um, must go up in two points each week. Um, it's two points from, it's 0.2 million of your purchase price. It needs to go up by. So if, it, if you purchase at 5.4, 5.5 and it goes down to 5.4, and you haven't sold him and he goes back up to 5.5, you immediately get that 0.1 value back in your team. However, if he goes from 5.5 to 5.6, there's no additional value, and then to 5.7, you can then sell him to 5.6. So players that are likely to go down in value and stay going down in value are more likely um, yeah, plangers or archers. Um, and so if we just do a quick check on them, no one, the reason I put plange in my team is he's owned by literally no one and so the chance of his price changing quickly goes is less he's currently at a negative 39.9 and archer is currently at negative 14.5 so these players are probably not going to lose any value and so 
it's no point spending a free transfer on banking in any value or jumping on any players that are potentially going up in value at the moment so the players that are likely to do that are already in my team which is quite lucky maybe potentially planned quite well and so the only other thing that I put that I could do this week is burn a transfer now that seems a bit extreme <laughs> it seems like a bit of a flare move to be completely honest um i suspect i could probably find a much better option in the 4.5 million price point to replace a castagna with and so that is my most likely um, transfer plan out this week and at the moment i'm probably looking at the likelihood of Henry, I think, is from Brentford. He's got 90 minutes in both matches. First game he got an assist, second game he got a clean sheet and 4 0 victory. In the 21 22 season, he also played 2,700 minutes, so he's a relatively nailed on player. Apologies, Brentford, I don't know your team too well. I'm sure there's probably some other um, players in there that could do quite well. I've also had a look at Ben Mee. However, he only played 58 minutes in that first match. Um, I'm not too sure why, uh, and he only got nine on the BPS system. However, in the game against Man United, he scored a goal, <laughs> playing 90 minutes. Um, and so he's potentially, I, I'm, I'm aware of what Ben Mee's um, skills are like, because he's he was playing for Burnley last year, and I, he's always a 90-minute man. And so maybe I just go for... The likes of Ben Mee is a bit more nailed. I may have to go into some Brentford forums to find out how likely Henry is to keep his spot. Um, or I go to the likes of Sanchez, uh, sorry, not Sanchez, Dunk, Lewis Dunk, at um, Brighton as my two most likely transfers. We will have to wait and see. Um, that's all for the transfer plans. We're only into game week three of the season there'll probably be a lot more options um, popping up in the coming game weeks but that is all for now if you did make it this far through the video please do give this video a like and if you uh, want to be notified of more content coming your way click that big red subscribe button it is free <laughs> to click that button so just go ahead and smash it and until next time I'll catch you again soon